Dr. Einstein, Albert Einstein, defined insanity as doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different results. result. Yeah. Look at this. We got these clowns and what? Same clowns who've been wrong for years. Every week, Mr. Paulson's been dead wrong. Mr. Bernanke's been dead wrong. And we're still letting them try to do something. And now, Mr. Obama's brought in these other clowns who did the same mistakes, who caused the same problems, and they're going to do the same thing. You think that this is not... I consider it insane. Dr. Einstein would think it's insane. This is not going to solve our problem. All right, well, welcome back to the show. Ron Paul, Republican congressman from Texas, former presidential candidate, who had some tough words for Ben Bernanke. Take a listen to this, please. Inflation is a tax, and if the Federal Reserve and you as chairman have this authority to increase the money supply arbitrarily, you're probably the, the biggest taxer in the country. Oh, Mr. Paul, I heard that this morning. I got so excited, sir. I just had to have you on. I'm so glad you're around today. I say almost nightly that inflation is the cruelest tax of all. And the Consumer Price Index, I'm sure you know this, but I didn't hear Bernanke reference it today. 1.1% increase in June, 7.9% at an annual rate over the past three months, and 5% over the last 12 months. Did, did Bernanke understand what you were getting at, sir? Well, I was hoping he did. You know, I did bring up the CPI very um, briefly, but uh, I thought he did concede half of the message that I gave because he did say that inflation was a tax. He did acknowledge that, but he didn't acknowledge that he had anything to do with it. Bernanke, you've you've gone on the record as ready. I mean, you'd like to see him. Leave, you'd like to see the Fed close down, essentially, if I'm not mistaken. Well, I'd rather have no Fed than what we have now. Do you know that the Federal Reserve's balance sheet has tripled? I mean, they they've taken. They won't even tell us the garbage they've taken. This is America. Remember, you're not worried about the country. This is a country where a man who was not elected by anybody has taken on hundreds of billions of dollars of debt for you and me. He won't tell us what he's done. He won't show us. They're running the country. I'd rather have no Federal Reserve than something like that and a, and a man which is printing, printing, printing money as fast as he can. But the world seems to want that. I mean, we read, we read uh, about what's going on today and, and more dollars are being printed because the global economies seem to be saying, please, give us more dollars to get through these times. Well, drug habits say, give me another shot, too. I mean, that doesn't mean that's the solution. That America, the Federal Reserve alone has, has um, taken on the obligation for $7 trillion of debt in the last six months. Now, the, America's total debt, government debt, was $5 trillion six months ago. The Federal Reserve, just in six months, has added over $7 trillion. And this is just what we can count. There's a lot we cannot... With you on this, the Federal Reserve is accumulating more and more authority now in our financial system. They may well be the so-called, quote, financial stabilizer of last resort. They now have new regulatory power over Wall Street investment banks. And, of course, they're supposed to balance unemployment and inflation. Mr. Paul, with all these new missions... It seems to me what's going to get sacrificed, inflation and the dollar. Isn't that the way this is going to wind up? Absolutely, but also our freedoms. Just that litany of what you listed there is central economic planning. We don't believe in central economic planning, at least I don't, but that's central economic planning through the monetary system and now the regulatory system. Not only does the Fed have the power over the supply and money and the interest rates, but now they want the regulatory function over more than just the banks, all the financial industries. I, I tell you, uh, I think it's a bad sign for free market capitalism. I've been talking, sir, a little bit just in recent days and weeks. I, this is a f funny story. I'm calling it the new socialism. Nobody can fail in America. If something fails, then government's going to come in and bail them out. Now the latest, of course, is Fannie and Freddie. There's a huge uh, housing bailout bill out there. Who knows? We may go to the airlines. We may go to the automobile companies. I don't know. You know, Phil Graham may have had a point. We are a nation of whiners. Nobody wants to lose. Capitalism, you're supposed to have the, the great uh, opportunity and freedom to succeed, but you also have the freedom to fail. What's happened to the freedom to fail? Well, you know, a lot of consumers and people who are losing their jobs, they have a right to be angry and, and complaining, and I, I sympathize uh, with them. And you talk about socialism, and we do have a form of socialism creeping in, but it sort of is of the fascist type because we have business and big government, you know, working together. It's not the old 
old-fashioned type of socialism where government owns everything, but they do control a lot of the financial markets for the benefit of certain industries, whether it's the banks or other industries, and they do want bailed out, and they, they are socializing their failures, and that certainly shouldn't be what we're working for. What is the worst case scenario for our markets then? Our markets are going lower. This is not just a financial crisis. This is an economic collapse. Our entire phony economy is collapsing around us. There's nothing the government can do to stop it. They should get out of the way and let it happen. So other than that, Mr. Lincoln, how did you like the play? <laughs> no, I mean, look, you have to our understand that, look, for the, past, like for the past several years, everybody thought we had a real economy. We didn't. We had a bubble. All we did is borrow trillions of dollars from the rest of the world, and we blew all the money on consumption. We can't pay the bills. The asset bubbles that were inflated by reckless monetary policy are deflating around us, and we're going to have to rebuild a viable economy, and it's not going to be easy. A lot of companies are going to go bankrupt uh, during the process. A lot of people are going to lose their jobs, but this has to happen. We have have to go back to a sane economy where we save our money and actually make stuff. Peter, okay. you've had this cold, absolutely dead on right, but you've liked things and you haven't liked things, like for instance, the U.S. dollar, you've been very bearish on, it's had a tremendous move. The bond market, I think you've been bearish on, a tremendous move. Canadian oil sands, I think you like. Even when you're right, which you've been, there have been so many pitfalls. Where would you put your money now? Well, remember, I'm not trying to give short-term advice. And I know right. that. But I, I think what's happened in commodities and the dollar right now is temporary. It's the result of this massive deleveraging. It's all these U.S. institutions that are having to sell everything they own to settle up their margin debt, to pay their bills. I think temporarily you're seeing these prices get sold off. It's not going to last. I would be taking advantage of these opportunities. I'd be buying these dips in commodities, buying some of these stocks abroad, and getting out of the dollar because it's a bottomless pit. When this dollar stops rallying, it's going to fall like a stone. That is the next major economic crisis we're setting up, a major major, major run on the dollar, and that's going to have tremendous repercussions for our economy and our markets. You know, uh, no, no, Dr. The, the problem started because Dr. Greenspan would never let anybody fail. Throughout the 90s, and, and the new guy, Geithner, they would never let anybody fail. And so if, if they had that long-term capital management fail in 1990, none of these problems would exist now. Lehman Brothers would still be in existence. Bear Stearns would still be in existence because they would not have been able to pull off these hanky-panky that they pulled off. They would have lost so much money. And then in the 90s, and in the early this decade, Dr. Greenspan had not taken rates to 1%. None of this would be happening now. Uh, there are those who say we're going to zero. Do you think so? Well, probably. They don't know anything else to do. I mean, oh, Bernanke, Bernanke does not understand economics. He does not understand markets. He does not understand currencies. All he understands is printing money. And we've given him the printing presses, and he's going to run them as fast as he's going to run them until we run out of trees. <laughs> Dr. Einstein, Albert Einstein, defined insanity as doing the same thing over and over again and expecting, expecting a different, different result. Yeah. Look at this. We've got these clowns and what? Same clowns who've been wrong for years. Every week, Mr. Paulson's been dead wrong. Mr. Bernanke has been dead wrong. And we're still letting them try to do something. And now, Mr. Obama's brought in these other clowns who did the same mistakes, who caused the same problems, and they're going to do the same thing. You think that this is not, I consider it insane. Dr. Einstein would think it's insane. This is not going to solve problems.